Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ. Coax cable. There's the old original stuff, RG58. I don't use RG58 for anything, not even for patch leads. You might think, well, that's all right, look, just from your, your rig to your ATU, that, that's fine, it's only that long. There's holes here, I'll explain that in a minute. EMI, there's holes in the shield on the cheaper stuff. This video, by the way, before I go on, this is for beginners, you know, newcomers to the hobby. Old timers will be saying, oh, I know all that, I know all that. Mind you, I'm an old timer and I didn't know all that. Watch to the end of the video and you'll see what I didn't know. I've just discovered something. Anyway, back to the RG58. I've never really given a great deal of thought to coax cable other than loss. OK, if you're on 10 metres, the 28, 29 meg amateur band, you want to feed an aerial, then the loss at those frequencies isn't a great deal, is it? Not unless you've got a huge run. So that will do. RG58 will do, as long as it's not too long. If you're going up to the 70 centimetre amateur band, then this is going to be really lossy. So I've never really given any thought to coax cable, other, as I say, other than the loss. That's the uh, old stuff, the thin stuff. This is the RG8X which I've been using quite a bit of up till recently. It's good stuff. If you look up on coax cable loss charts, they all vary, by the way. Well, like the whole, anything on the internet, everything contradicts everything else. But you get an idea of the loss per, say, 100 feet at certain frequencies. So I use RG8X. I think it's fairly new, isn't it? 8 I've got the wrong one again. That's the 8X, the thicker one. It's thicker than 58. The screen is better than the 58. Bear in mind, again, there are different makes, different manufacturers, and they are the screen will be better on some than others. But I used the, the Mini, the RG8X, which is pretty good at, well, certainly at 10 metres. And I've also used it uh, for 6 metres and the 4 metre amateur band, 70 megs. Above that... For two meters and seventy sems, I've in the past I've used RG two one three, which is as you know the fat stuff and is is pretty good. That is low loss, especially up at those frequencies. What else should I have thought about as far as coax cable is concerned? I'm not talking about velocity factor and all that stuff. We don't want to get involved in that. But what other basic thing, fundamental thing, should I have given some thought to? I recently bought some RG214. I bought a whole load of it, second hand, but perfectly good condition. And I thought, this is it. This is the stuff to use. This is the ultra low loss ace of all coax cables, right? Well, unless you go into the really expensive stuff. So I'm looking on charts online, thinking that I compare this, you know, with my RG8X, this Mini Mini X stuff, because that one, isn't it? Mini X, whatever it is. And the 214 is really good. And even at 28 megs, 29 megs, I've got a 100 foot run, which is what, 30, 30 meters? So I thought I'm going to use a 214. I happen to compare it with 213. Now, don't shoot me, I'm only the messenger. 213 is less lossy than 214. No, it's not, you're saying, no, you got that wrong. That's what I thought totally wrong type into google coax loss chart look on the images and you will find that rg213 and 214 and some charts are about the same but a lot of the charts are putting 213 as less lossy the better cable than 214 now i i was i thought this has got to be wrong you know this is crazy in fact i was looking around the internet and i found an article someone had written and it said, if you're looking for low loss for your aerial feed and your cable with coax, 213. If you're looking for EMI, if you've got EMI problems, electromagnetic interference, go for 214. And I'm thinking, what's all this about? Yeah, I don't understand all this. I thought 214 was the ultra low stuff, loss. Right, let's go back to this RG58. You can see... The inner there, that inner, you can see it through the holes in the braid, can't you? If you get a bit of it, you can have a look. Well, I mean, especially if you open it up like that. But when it's 
proper like that, you can still see through it. Now I read somewhere that the screening of the inner is only say 60, 70%. If you had a, a solid copper tube as the screen, as the shield, it would be 100% shielded, wouldn't it? I mean, obviously we can't have a copper pipe, good though it would be. So as there are holes in that, I can see the inner of the dielectric through those holes. The coax cable can pick up electromagnetic interference. Now my coax goes up through the loft, across, you know, across the attic and out into the garden. It goes up there, there's mains wiring up there, there's power wiring, there's all sorts up there. Out in the garden where it goes along to the aerial. This can act as an aerial, the inner can pick up electromagnetic interference. Another problem is this can radiate electromagnetic interference through the not so well screened inner, okay? It's not that well screened. If you've got, I've got a bit of 214 at the moment. Here, here's a picture of the 214, you see that? Not a very good picture. Look at that. Both screens, you, the first one's cut off quite short. I didn't cut it like this, that's how it ended up. But you can see that both the screens, two shields or whatever you want to call it, the braid, two of them, are very close weave, silver plated. I mean, it's almost as good as a copper pipe, isn't it? A solid copper pipe. And that is nearing, or probably is, 100% shielding. Now, I've never given this thought. I used to think that the double shield was to do with loss. You know, the thicker the cable and all that, the less loss. But it's not, apparently. It's EMI. And that is a good point. Now, what I've done is on my 10 meter, number six meter aerial, I ran the 214, RG214 to it. Obviously signals are a lot better because it's quite, a, that's about 80 feet, the six meter. No, it's not, that's 100 feet as well. I used to use the Mini 8, you know, the 8X. Signals have come up obviously because 214 is better than that. But the noise has gone down. There's some sort of local noise, perhaps where it goes through the attic. It was picking up some local noise and that there is a, a noticeable reduction in noise. And that's what the double screening is all about. The double screening and the silver, both the screens, both shields are silver plated, so is the inner. So all that is going to help with loss as well. But the main thing is about the double screening is EMI, keeping it out of the coax and stopping it radiating from the coax. Uh, make your own mind up. You don't believe me. I always say this in videos. This is what I've discovered. I might be wrong. Have a look at all the charts. Type in coax chart, lo coax loss chart or something and have a look for yourself. They all vary, as I said, but have a look. I have also used this, as I said, on the 10 meter band, uh, 28, 29 megs. The noise level, I haven't noticed any difference. I don't think I had noise there but signals have really come up. I know some of the locals, I know their signal strength, and I've just replaced the RG8X with the 214, and the signals have come up really well. So it does make a difference. So all these years, I've thought, I don't know what all this double screening's about, it must be about loss. It is to an extent, but it's mainly EMI. I've just looked at a couple of charts RG58, the thin stuff, this is at 100 megs, 100 feet, right, 30 meters, 100 megs, 100 feet. RG58, loss, 5.3. RG8X, 3.6, that's the fatter stuff. 213, fatter still, 2.1. 214, 1.9. That's saying 214 is the best out of the whole lot. Another chart, same frequency, same length of coax. RG58 4.9 was 5.3. 8X 3.6, that was 3. 213 is now 2.2 instead of 2.1. And the 214, it was 1.9 dB, it's now 2.5. So there's all this variation all over the place. What I would say is, well, I've said already, you know, come to your own conclusion, but I would say that 214 and 213 are about the same uh, loss wise, but the 214 is better for shielding and EMI and stuff like that. 
That'll do, otherwise you'll all be going to sleep or going off up the pub. Have a look, and make up your own mind, see what you think. Look at all these charts and stuff, and they all vary. And uh, good luck with your aerials. One last thing before I go. You'll find that the if you've got the screw on type, you know, where the there's a threaded hole in the end of your PL259, you'll find that on the 214 it's slightly thicker. And these won't screw on. Well, they will just about. It is a problem. The 213 is slightly thinner and it fits not too bad. What I was going to say was don't go to the trouble of getting all the nice expensive coax and then bodging the plug on the end. Put the plug on properly, even if it takes you all day. Otherwise, you're going to have all a bad connection and loss uh, at the plug itself, which will defeat the object. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye for now.